Good evening and welcome. My name is Laura Jacobs and I'm the Senior Manager of Customer Advocacy here at CPS Energy. I want to thank you for joining us today for the CPS Energy's Virtual People First Community Fair. We have a strong commitment to our community and our customers. While we would have loved to join you in the community due to COVID-19 health pandemic, we are promoting wellness and are using technology to share information about CPS Energy's programs and initiatives. We are excited today to be joined by District 8 City Councilman Manny Polias, in addition to members of our CPS Energy's team. Randy DeLeon, an outreach specialist, will tell us about CPS Energy's customers assistance programs, while Priscilla Robledo will be, uh, is with our customer response unit, and is, uh, which is also known as CREW, will educate us on the City of San Antonio and Bear County's assistance programs. She will also share information on some of CPS Energy's available rebates. John Liao is our Director of Local Government Relations. He'll be covering CPS Energy's Flex Power Bundle initiative and the proposed Rates Advisory Committee. Councilman Polias, thank you for hosting this event with me. Before we jump into our program, I want to give you an opportunity to address and welcome our attendees this evening. Councilman? Hi, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, you're not just customers of CPS Energy. You are, um, you're, shareholders you are uh you know you are stakeholders in what um cps does uh and you are the bosses and i think it's really important to keep that in mind and i think that's the tone that, that i'd like to set today is and uh, is to make sure that um you all understand that this isn't just not some privately owned company this is your company uh, and CPS Energy is um, a company run by San Antonians for San Antonians, and I'm proud to be part of this uh, part of this effort. Um, and you learn uh, a lot about what it is that CPS does uh, to make sure that we're a community that uh, thrives, um, and that we're able to uh, make sure that everybody gets what they need, uh, while at the same time being very sensitive to um, you know, costs and sustainability efforts. And so I'm, I'm delighted to be here with you guys. We're, we got a lot to talk about, a lot of ground to cover. Thank you, Councilman. We value our partnership with the city and the county. We continuously use various methods to share customer program and utility assistance information with our community. Also, some of our guests today will mention additional assistance programs that are available. I believe our virtual attendees will appreciate learning the, about the many programs we have to offer. As a reminder to our attendees, we are recording today's presentation and we'll be sharing it on social media at a later date. Also, we look forward to answering your questions throughout the program. Please use the chat feature to connect with a team member. Our first topic this evening is uh, customer assistance programs. Joining us today is Randy DeLeon to elaborate on these programs. Welcome, Randy. Thank you, Ms. Laura. Hello, everyone. I'm Randy DeLeon with our community engagement team. CPS Energy has a variety of money saving and general assistance programs designed to help our customers. This evening, I'll be going over a few of our customer assistance programs, including our first responders with burn injuries discount program, our critical care program, our budget payment plan, our manage my account, as well as auto pay. Now I will begin with our newest program, the first responders with burn injuries discount program. This program provides electric bill assistance to firefighters and police officers who have significantly decreased their ability to regulate their core body temperatures due to the severe burn injuries sustained in the course of providing first responder duties. Qualified first responders will receive up to $94 per month off the electric portion of their CPS energy bill between the months of April to October. To qualify for the first responders with burn injuries discount program, first a medical facility certification is required, then a completed application is required to be faxed by the medical facility to 210-353-3666. Again, that's 210-353-3666. This medical confirmation is only required every 24 months, so once every two years and the applicant must be a City of San Antonio resident. To apply, the first responder can access our application online by visiting our website at cpsenergy.com forward slash assistance, or by calling us at 210-353-4338. Again, that's 210-353-4338.
Now, for my next topic, we have the Critical Care Program, which provides our residential customers who utilize electrically operated medical equipment in their homes with additional time to pay their bills. To qualify, we do require uh, confirmation from the patient's attending physician that medical equipment is used by the patient and is required at the applicant's residence. Also, please keep in mind, to continue participation in our critical care program, the customer must provide a renewed application from the attending physician every 24 months. Again, that's just once every two years. How to apply? Well, our customers can access the critical care application by visiting our website at cpsenergy.com forward slash assistance or by calling us at 210-353-2222. Next is our budget payment plan, which allows residential and business customers the opportunity to better budget their personal expenses while avoiding the surprise of an unexpected higher than normal energy bill when the weather changes. With the budget payment plan, your annual energy bill is averaged over the past year, a small percentage is added to cover environmental factors and changing fuel costs. Then you would pay that resulting amount every month for the next year. And don't worry, your account will be reviewed periodically and any necessary adjustments will be made based on your actual usage. To qualify, you must uh, have been a CPS Energy customer for at least a year and have good payment history. Also, be current on your utility bill. To apply, you may enroll by logging into your Manage My account, or you can call us at 210-353-2222. Lastly, I will provide you some information on our Manage My account, as well as AutoPay. Manage My account is located on our CPS Energy website and is a helpful tool for our customers. By enrolling into Manage My account, you can view your bills going back up to 12 months. You can also pay your current bill, or you can enroll in our auto pay option. When you enroll in auto pay, your CPS energy balance is deducted from your bank account on the scheduled billing due date. You can also request a start, stop, or transfer of services online, giving you that one less hassle when you're moving so we can update your contact information. If you need payment arrangements, you can also request an installment plan or a payment extension on your billing due date. We at CPS Energy understand that things can and do happen, and we want you to have as many options as possible to maintain your account and your services. Finally, within your Manage My Account page, you can access our newly updated My Energy Portal. The Energy Portal provides you secure information on your day-to-day, -day, hour to hour energy usage, how you compare to your neighbors, how the weather can impact your energy usage and what appliances or items in your home are using the most energy. This tool is very informative and very easy to use. If you have any questions on how to use My Energy Portal, please call us at 210-353-2222. This concludes uh, my portion of the presentation. I wanna thank you for this opportunity to provide you with this information, which I hope you found helpful. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, that was excellent. All right, uh, Randy, can you tell us uh, what is one of the easiest ways for our District 8 residents to find the resources and programs available to our community? Yes, Ms. Laura, the easiest way for our customers to contact us is by um, calling us at 210-353-2222, or if they like, they can visit us on our website at cpsenergy.com forward slash assistance. There they can find all the programs that we offer our community. Also, just a FYI, I am part of the public safety and education team. We are also doing virtual safety presentations. So if you would like a virtual safety presentation for any community leaders, any teachers, please contact us at 210-353-3939. Or you can email us at publicsafetyedu at cpsenergy.com. Thank you. Thank you. As Randy mentioned, CPS Energy has a variety of programs to offer to all of our customers. When We encourage you to visit cpsenergy.com backslash assistance for more information. 
Next this evening, we have our customer response unit. Priscilla Robledo will cover assistance programs available through the city and the county. Additionally, she'll tell us about CPS Energy's available rebates. Welcome, Priscilla. Thank you, Laura. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Priscilla Robledo, and I'm a member of the CPS Energy Customer Response Unit, or the crew team, and also the liaison for District 8. I'd like to thank you for joining us today, as your time is very valuable to us. Uh, today, I'm really excited to share some information with you about various utility assistance and resources that are available. I'll also be talking about a variety of money saving and energy efficient CPS energy programs designed to help our customers. Uh, this evening, I'll be going over a few of our assistance programs, including our residential energy assistance partnership program, known as our REIT program, uh, Bayer County Strong, focusing on the utility assistance resources, uh, the City of San Antonio's Neighborhood and Housing Services Department, which is NHSD, uh, for housing and utility assistance resources, and finally, CPS Energy's Save Now Rebates and Programs. Now, I'd like to begin by sharing information about several agencies within the community that offer utility assistance resources, including the general qualifiers and how to apply for assistance within each agency. Now, you can always visit our website at cpsenergy.com forward slash assistance or call us at 210-353-2222 for information on all of the resources that we're going to be discussing today. Now, to be eligible for these agency resources, at least one of the following must be met. Uh, our seniors who are 60 years or older, families with young children, individuals with disabilities, or those using critical medical care equipment, like Randy was talking about earlier, uh, or if you've been impacted by COVID-19. Now, to begin, the CPS Energy Residential Energy Assistance Program, or REAP, is a partnership with the City of San Antonio and Bayer County. A CPS Energy contributes 1 million or more per year to the REAP fund. And through our REAP program, customers are able to receive payment assistance through the City of San Antonio's Department of Human Services, which is DHS, where qualified customers can receive up to $400 applied towards their CPS Energy bill. And to qualify for the REAP program, you must have an income at or below 125% of the federal poverty guidelines and experiencing a financial hardship. For instance, as this next slide shows, a family of four can have a gross income not exceeding the amount of $2,729. Now, to apply, uh, you can complete the online application by visiting the website sanantonio.gov forward slash DHS utility. This electronic application allows for faster communication, and it also allows you to check the status of your application while it's pending. Now, if you're not tech savvy, uh, don't worry, there are also paper applications available at that website. You can also call the City of San Antonio's Department of Human Services at 210-207-7830 for more information. Next, we'll be talking a little bit about Bayer County Strong. Now, through Bayer County's Economic and Community Development Department, they also have utility assistance uh, available where customers may receive payment assistance in a partnership with the county. Now, Bayer County Strong um, also has resources assisting with rent, relocation, and employment and job training opportunities. Uh, and with this program, customers can receive up to $1,200 in utility assistance. And to qualify for the Bayer County uh, utility assistance, you have an income at or below 150% of the federal poverty guidelines and experiencing a financial hardship. Um, this slide shows, uh, for example, a family of four can have a gross monthly income not exceeding the amount of $3,275. So it's a little bit different from the city. Now, to apply, you can download and print the application by visiting the website www.bear.org forward slash 3314 forward slash bear hyphen county hyphen strong. You can also request an application by emailing client services at bear.org, um, or if you have any questions or for more information, you can reach out to them by phone at 210-335-3666. Next, I'll be sharing some information on the City of San Antonio's Neighborhood and Housing Services Department, which is NHSD. Now, through the NHSD program, customers may actually receive housing and utility assistance 
uh, where our eligible customers may receive up to $2,625 in housing assistance and up to $1,125 for utility assistance. Now, this can help with anywhere from one to three months of billing. To qualify for the Neighborhood and Housing Services Department, uh, you must have an income at or below 100% of the average median income and experiencing a financial hardship. So as this slide shows, a family of four can have a gross monthly income not exceeding $5,917. Now to apply, uh, you can complete an online application by visiting that sanantonio.gov forward slash DHS utility uh, website and then clicking on the housing assistance button that's located at the bottom of the page. You can also call the city of San Antonio's NHSD department at 210-207-5910 for more information. Now we're gonna move on to our next topic, which uh, is where I'll be discussing our Save Now rebates and energy efficiency programs. We offer Save Now energy savings and rebates to help our customers save energy and also to reduce the overall demand for energy in our community. You can always find information and applications at cpsenergy.com forward slash save now, or by calling 210-353-2SAVE, which is 210-353-2728. So first I'd like to share some information about our, our available home efficiency rebates. Uh, currently CPS Energy is offering rebates for the following. We've got attic insulation, central air conditioners and heat pumps, pool pumps, and window, uh, window AC units. We're also offering the following natural gas rebates uh, for appliances such as your gas clothes dryer, uh, your gas water heater, which can be tank uh, with a tank or tankless, uh, and also gas cooktops or stoves. Uh, another uh, gas uh, rebate that we offer are gas conversion rebates for your water heater, your dryer, or your cooktop or stove appliances. Now to apply and qualify for these rebates, our applications must be received within 30 days of installation. CPS Energy also offers a cool roof rebate. Now, a cool roof is one that has been designed to reflect more sunlight and absorb less heat than a standard roof and can help reduce the energy required to cool a home by reflecting solar energy. This can help lower roof surface temperatures by up to 50 degrees and reduce cooling demand by 10 to 15 percent. Now to apply and qualify for a cool roof rebate, applications do need to be received by December 31st, 2020, um, and customers who retrofit their roofs with the qualifying materials uh, will be eligible for one of two tiered structures. Uh, and just to let you know, rebates average about $144 to about $360 per project. Now that's based on the average size of a home of 1,800 square feet. Next, we'll be discussing our Wi-Fi thermostat rewards program, where you can save $85 when you enroll a qualified Wi-Fi thermostat in your home. Now, a programmable thermostat helps make it easy for you to save by offering pre-programmed settings to help regulate the temperature in your home. Uh, to qualify for the Wi-Fi rewards, uh, you just need to enroll an eligible Wi-Fi thermostat in our rewards program. Uh, and then during summer peak energy day demand days, uh, we may briefly adjust your thermostat settings by a few degrees, but it's only as needed. You can always opt out of participating in the peak demand events by manually adjusting your thermostat or by going through the app. Now, following that summer season of each year, uh, you're also eligible for a $30 bill credit per household account, and you'll continue to earn that credit as long as uh, you, are, you are enrolled in the program. Now, um, to apply, uh, you may complete an online application by vis visiting our website at cpsenergy.com forward slash save now, uh, and just visit our Wi-Fi thermostat rewards link, uh, clicking on the enroll now button for your thermostat. If you have any questions, you can always call us at 210-353-2SAVE, which again is at 210-353-2728. Uh, lastly, um, I'd love to provide some information on our Casa Verde program. Uh, this program helps income qualified families reduce energy costs with free energy efficiency improvements like attic or wall insulation, air and duct sealing measures, and the installation of LED light bulbs. Now, this program is available to both homeowners and renters, 
and provides an average of about $5,000 or up to $5,000 in energy efficiency upgrades at no cost. That's zero dollars. Uh, now, to qualify for this program, for the cost of the program, you do have to have an income at or below 200% of the federal poverty guidelines. Uh, so, for instance, as the, slide, the next slide will show, a family of four can have a gross income not exceeding $4,367. Now, to apply, our applications are available online uh, to print and uh, or at, I'm sorry, excuse me, at our website, tpsenergy.com forward slash Casa Verde, um, or you can give us a call and we can send one out to you. And that number will be 210-353-CASA or 210-353-2272. Uh, this concludes my presentation, and I really want to thank you guys for this opportunity to provide you with all of this information, which I hope you found helpful. Thank you. Pris Priscilla, thank you so much. That really was uh, a lot of information, all very valuable. I, I know your office works closely with the customer response unit, providing support to uh, our District 8 residents. Can you talk to us a little bit about how uh, the customer response unit has had to adapt uh, during this uh, COVID-19 challenge uh, when it comes to engaging with our community? Uh, most certainly. Um, so uh, with the pandemic, it has proven to be a little bit difficult in, in engaging, uh, but we've been we've been working hard at uh, finding ways, for example, you know, having virtual forums like this or FaceTiming with our customers. Um, I do want to let you know that um, one of the other ways that we're engaging is that we're doing virtual presentations. Uh, Randy earlier said that he's going out to our schools and our students and they're doing public safety and education. But we're also reaching out to like our HOAs, our senior centers, um, and we're able to provide again that face to face interaction just virtually. Um, so I do want to share this information actually. Um, to request an HOA presentation or even, you know, our public safety and education. Um, we're still here. We still want to talk to everyone. You know, we want to talk to you guys. Um, and you can email either of these email addresses uh, for HOA crew at cpsenergy.com um, or for PSE or public safety and education, uh, public safety edu at cpsenergy.com. Um, we look forward to, to again, re engaging and, and, and finding new ways to, to meet our, our communities. Again, excellent information. Thank you so much, Priscilla. Laura, back to you. Thank you, Councilman, and thank you, Priscilla. CPS Energy generally cares about our community and promotes any programs that can help support our customers, whether it's our own CPS Energy programs or local, uh, local agency partners programs. Our crew team has definitely had to get creative to maintain engagement with the District 8 community while practicing physical distancing. Our final topic of the evening is CPS Energy's Flex Power Bundle Initiative and our proposed Rates Advisory Committee. Joining us today is John Liao. He's our Director of Local Government Relations. Welcome, John. Thanks, Laura. And Councilman, it's so good to see you again. You know, I'd like to take a moment before I start on my presentation just to tie back to what Randy and Priscilla pro provided information on. Safety is very important to us and we, we can't lose sight of the fact that um, we have a large community, we have a lot of infrastructure out there, and we want to make sure our community, our customers, our residents are well informed on our programs and where we can give that information out. Uh, we'd be happy to uh, go wherever you'd like us to and meet with whoever you'd like us to um, at your request. Uh, for Priscilla, you know, we talk about ways to save money, and, and that is really an important facet of, of how we care for our customers, whether it be through a rebate, um, you know, I've, I've partaken in the rebate process myself, and, and I, I think it's a good product. Um, I also think that um, for those that are economically less fortunate, we have an avenue to protect them as well, and that's a priority for us uh, in the community, and that's why we do the affordability discount program, and that's why uh, it's so important for us to uh, have customers reach out to REIT, uh, because it, this is unprecedented times. Uh, things are different and it puts a lot of pressure on working families that have normally been able to uh, manage, uh, but during these, this COVID period, it's, it's a little bit different. So um, I'm going to talk today about our proposed Rates Advisory Committee and a bit on Flex Power Bundle. You might have the next slide, please. Earlier this year, well, we're going to talk about recommendations from the management team, and we're also going to talk about where we're at with Flex Power Bundle. Early this year, the mayor sent our board of directors a memo uh, requesting uh, 
a rates advisory committee with inclusion from city council members like yourself for a representative. Um, we met shortly thereafter as a board and the board did approve a resolution to support the development of management to seek out a proper uh, proposed structure for this committee. Next slide, please. We've had a number of meetings where we've had this discussion with our board of trustees and have given some pretty in-depth information requesting input from our board on the direction to go, especially at the September 21 and the October 26 meeting. From a governance perspective, um, we're looking at possibly 21 people, 11 chosen by the board and mayor, and of course, 10 uh, appointments from your colleagues. We're also suggesting that there be a technical advisory committee uh, with, uh, we've gone out for a proposal for a technical advisor, we've gone out for a facilitative advisor, and we've gone, and, and we'll, we'll hopefully have not just our subject matter experts, uh, representation from the RAC or proposed RAC, and then uh, internal staff as well as, long, as well as the city. You might say, what does a member need to have? And I think, you know, it's a varying amount of, of qualifications. Uh, any experience is valuable. Uh, we want representation from all customer segments. Uh, we do believe that in order to participate in this program or this committee, you need to be a resident and you need to be a customer in our service territory. We want diversity. Uh, we want an understanding of corporate governance, certainly somebody with uh, leadership skills in, in something that, that we're going to talk about here in a moment is the time commitment. So everything is still proposed, especially our bylaws are still in draft form. But what I want people to know is we, we have a process that we're trying to figure out right now. Membership, who should have this, who should have roles, who should be eligible, the composition, uh, the selection and term limits of, uh, of uh, committee chairs or co-chairs or vice chair. Uh, the um, cadence at which you meet for the length of time, how do we post this information and, and are we going to, you know, have subcommittees of this um, proposed RAC? And so I've been partaking in this process for a little bit now. We did send our RFP for a rate advisory consultant out to a number of consultancies across the United States. We reviewed 11 of them, and we're actually in round three right now of the um, uh, virtual interviews. And now we haven't made a final choice, uh, but we will certainly um, be ready to do so sometime in the near future uh, with, of course, governance from our board. Very similar to other structures, we wanna make sure that, that this proposed advisory committee has access not only to our top leadership and the CEO, but our board of trustees, much in the same way that our community partner groups have at the current time, you know, uh, in today's time period as well. And we also have a good citizens advisory committee. And thank you to, to your appointment of John Kelly to that committee, he's been a great addition to it. When I said diversity of the community, we meant that. Is it business stakeholders? Is it the environmental groups? Uh, you know, we have a solar stakeholder group. Um, our school districts are very important to us. And so we wanna make sure that we're broad in our outreach uh, and who could be involved in this potential structure. We're planning on live streaming these meetings and recording them. Uh, having the public be able to um, view it at their leisure or live. Uh, we'll post information on our website like we do today when we have community meetings, like we'll do with this one. And we'll also consider varying times to meet. Uh, is, is, you know, day office hours more appropriate than evening hours, et cetera. We want to be able to provide the RAC a helpful and unique knowledge base on the insights of what we do as an, as an industry and utility, with the ultimate goal of being way into the value pillars that we have um, which affordability and reliability remain the top two responses we get from our customers when we ask them, what is most important? And, and hopefully we'll be able to discuss the public issues and concerns that are out in the community. So there's an expectation from, uh, from the utility and the, and the consultant, and there's also, you know, we want a you know, responsibility and, and, and an expectation from each committee member. And so, this broadly describes that we will devote the necessary time and information and knowledge base to understand the complexity of what we do. And we also want to be able to uh, understand you know, what would be a strategy or an alternative solution. And so we want to make sure that their input 
uh, from the proposed RAC is considered uh, and how we take all concerns uh, to heart. I will say this, that ultimately the, the re role and responsibility uh, and accountability for our rates resides with our Board of Trustees and the City Council. So, someone might say, well, what's the RAC going to do? We want to we'll, uh, create a pathway for input to the management and board, much like that slide um, uh, with the structure of it. They'll learn about cost structures. Uh, we want them to ask relevant questions and raise concerns. We'll review the impact of uh, generation resource implications, and they will function as an advisory role. There is curriculum that will need to be developed. There's context and history on, on current utility practices and best practices. Uh, we believe that there are trends and, and, you know, really industry acumen that's important. We've got a lot to consider in San Antonio and the greater community about environmental considerations, regulatory parameters, and, and really, you know, how do we look at our current rate design or others? This is just an illustrative timeline of what I spoke to earlier. We have been active with the board and we continue to seek input from them uh, when we meet with them and we will meet with them in November again. So I'll stop here for a moment before we transition into Flex Power Bundle uh, and an update on that. Uh, we wanna hear from the community. Uh, public input is, is important for us. We do have an English and Spanish uh, phone line that has been established that will be monitored. Uh, we want uh, the community to uh, tell us what they think. And for example, if someone's interested in participating in this community, this committee, let us know. It's a perfect opportunity for people to phone in, leave us their name or number, we can get back to them, we can send them an application, et cetera. Another question that you could pose to the community is, you know, how much time a month do you think a committee like this should spend on a uh, you know, meeting? Is it one hour, is it three hours, is it five? Uh, also, before we move on to the next uh, section, I do want to encourage our listeners uh, and viewers this evening to watch and listen to our Board of Trustees meeting. They are live streamed, it's telephonic. Uh, our board information and presentations are posted online and in advance. And you can follow along as our Board of Trustees hear from uh, experts across the utility about the matters that are important to us. We've talked about a lot about Flex Power Bundle. We went out for an RFI early this year requesting some information back on what might be available out there. You know, we have been very successful with the fleet of plants that we've owned and operated, uh, but that fleet continues to get older. And currently, we've got about 1,700 megawatts that we will need to take offline because they are old. Uh, they are uh, less efficient, uh, and, and it, we only really run these during the summer peaks. They do become less reliable, and there is more of a financial risk if those units don't perform as they should. It's like an older car. Uh, there's only so many miles, it's RPM and speed that you can take an older vehicle before it starts to have problems. Couple that with the fact that if we're losing 1,700 megawatts, how do we grow you know, the bandwidth that we need to power our community? So we'll go out for an RFI later this, um, I'm sorry, RFP later this year, Flex Power Bundle. We are asking for uh, commitments of 900 megawatts of solar, about 50 megawatts of battery storage. That's new technology. We're understanding how that uh, has an effect on our system, and we want to have that available, uh, not just for our portfolio, but for our customers. And of course, we understand that sometimes the wind doesn't blow or the sun doesn't shine, we need some type of firming capacity to match with that new technology so that we can meet the same requirements and reliability uh, that a traditional unit would have. I've also talked to you a lot and with your support earlier this year, uh, we, we did a step bridge extension. The step was highly successful. We saved 171 megawatts. Um, our goal was 171 megawatts and we actually saved 833 megawatts about the size of a very large power plant. We avoided that cost. We budgeted $850 million, and we came in $130 million under budget. We completed it one year early. We understand that there's the tried and true products that have been successful for us, and we're looking to see how innovation coupled with 
uh, either a step bridge extension or later in 21, how flex step, a bigger and bolder program can be released again with the tried and true and then what's new to help customers embrace technology. We've come a long way in our step vision. We started the Safe for Tomorrow Energy Plan in 2009 and 10. We released the, uh, the uh, flex power, I'm sorry, flexible path plan a couple of years ago. And all this ties together, power bundle, flex step, again, tried and true with new clean technologies and product offerings for our customers. Uh, I'll end on this slide uh, for any questions you might have. But again, 210-353-6788, public input. Are you interested in participating? How long do you think these meetings should last? Uh, should it be ad hoc? period of time and then disband. We're open for community input, sir. Thank you, John. That, that's excellent information. And as always, you exceed my expectations um, with uh, the amount of information you, you provide us. I'm, uh, I'm really excited about this flex plan. And I think that uh, the more people learn about it, the more they'll realize that CPS really is a, uh, a very unique, um, a unique company in that it will, it, unlike a lot of other companies, you know, here we are asking people to really think about ways that they can save money and pay CPS less. Like what other company sits down with you and says, all right, let us figure out a way for you to pay us less. And I think that's what's beautiful about this whole concept of a municipally owned utility. And that is instead of you guys just operating from a profit model to pay off and, you know, investors or to send money off to New York or wherever it is that banks are, all that money goes back into the community. Um, and that your number one responsibility is to serve the community and help them thrive. And so um, I, I think that's that's incredibly important. And, um, you know, I know that you've been there for a long time and that this is one of your passions is helping people connect uh, with the utility and learn more about it. So thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. And I really appreciate it on behalf of this team, all that you do for your community and for the city. Uh, it's a great job. I've known you for a number of years and very proud that you're serving in this world now. Thank you. And, you know, now that we're recording this video, is it fair um, to ask, you know, of, of all of your city council members, um, you know, your favorite, you know, can you please tell the crowd why I am your favorite? Well, because it is uh, uh, November 5th, 2020, and this has been a wonderful event. So you are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Laura, back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman Plyas. Uh, and thank you, John. We are now at the end of our program. Councilman, would you like to provide any closing comments for our audience today? Yes. You know, even though there's a lot of smiles on this presentation, um, you know, 2020 has not been a, a smiling kind of year for us. It's been really difficult. Um, you know, fate has thrown all of us for a loop. We've gotten, um, you know, a, a major pandemic uh, that we've we got, we're facing an economic crisis around the world um, and, you know, people have been worrying about how to make ends meet. This, um, this crisis has pulled the curtain back on exactly how much a lot of folks have been hurting, um, but it doesn't change the fact that people still need clean water on demand and clean energy on demand um, and they need the services uh, that a, a city like San Antonio uh, delivers. And that's why I think it's so important that we continue this conversation about how CPS can help its customers respond to these crises and these challenges by bringing creative programs um, like the ones we've heard about today to help folks save money and stay um, on the right path towards, well, resilience. And so uh, with that, I'll tell you, I I think that we don't do a good enough job, and by we, I mean me and my city council members, we don't do a good enough job of, of letting people know exactly how lucky it is that, you know, San Antonians have a CPS. 
Um, because if you were living in any other city, I don't think that you would get um, this entire spectrum of, of services and all the goodwill that comes with San Antonians serving San Antonians the way CPS does. And so, Laura, I, this has been a joy uh, to be with you guys. And uh, I know for sure that we're going to share this presentation with a lot of people uh, over over the next few weeks. And we are going to do this again. But, um, Laura, you're 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 pretty good at what you're at what you do too <laughs> Ella, and i appreciate you helping us tonight uh, thank you uh, uh, thank you for those remarks we, we greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to host this event with us uh, i i want to remind everyone that if you have any questions you'd like to ask us please use the chat feature our crew team has been with us and uh throughout the evening answering your questions in real time we will remain live for the next couple of minutes uh thank you very much for joining cps energy's virtual people first community fair hosted with uh, councilman manny polias enjoy the rest of your evening night <laughs>